Wells, we are on the ever important decider matches. Uh, these are between uh, the four players in Group A that have one and one scores, and the ones that manage to uh, to win just one more will move on to the final day. And uh, to kick it off, we have Amnesiac versus Forsen. We just saw Forsen play. Um, Never lucky with Shaman, I guess, uh, but he's going to have to be. Shaman and Druid are the decks of the tournament to beat so far. What do you think? What do you think, Froden? Is it, is it going to be the Rogue bonus class or the Mage bonus class that's going to take it here? I think you're muted. Okay, so it's not just me. Okay, well, I'll try to interpret what Ferdinand's saying. He's saying, yes. Oh, I love <clears throat> sorry, man. I actually had okay. my uh, mic muted for the break. I apologize. <laughs> Production values. It's Frodan's fault. Blame Frodan. Um, Blame Frodan. Right after you sat me as well. Uh, so I, 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 I'm talking about the lineups. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, debate on how standard will continue to form, but it's very, very clear that at least from the players' perspectives. Druid and Shaman are very solid. Now, I do want to remind you guys about two things. The first is that this will completely change when Standard gets their new expansion, because Standard won't release until we get the actual expansion. It's not going to be like Standard, and then a month later the expansion comes. Second thing is that uh, this is only half the player pool, and it's only based off what they decide the metagame is. They all collectively think Druid and Shaman are the most represented class, but there could be a sleeper class that does really well. For example, Trump's Warlock deck, which could be the MVP of the tournament. Um, but then it might conveniently run to a Rogue deck, which happens to be very good against Zoo. So there's all this like different dynamics of it. Uh, yeah. I, I think Rogue versus Mage, uh, I'm tending to lean towards uh, the Rogue because it feels like it has a lot more ability to fight, fight against the field. But at the same time, Forsen's done... Like 50 50 with the mage so far, and I, you can't really argue with the results if it gets a win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the rogue is probably around there as well. I mean, the rogues and tournaments that we've seen have been uh, roughly 50%. Uh, now, Amnizak, we did not get to see his, uh, his second match uh, against uh, Eloise, but I believe he defeated her 3 0. And mm -hmm. his match in his opening game was rather close. So uh, it seems like uh, we have two uh, pretty good contenders on our hands leading into this. It is. Um, you know, Forsen has the Tempo Mage, and he's got the experience of playing in many events. Amnesiac is still new to events. I met him at the Team Brawl. Uh, he's, you know, he, he's not really that nervous in competitions because he's also played in a lot of, like, you know, sports and stuff. He's, a, he's like a high school athlete, so he's entered a lot of events before. But at the same time, it's still one of those things where you're being scrutinized by tens of thousands of people, and and Forsen, you know, deals with people in, in, of Amnesiac's age every day when he logs on. So he's he's very well prepared for this kind of pressure from the youngins. All right. Well, we'll have to see how it'll take off here. I feel like um, Forsen got a bit unlucky in that last Shaman game against Strife Crow. I still think he has the the favorite deck in the Shaman Mirror. So I, I kind of I kind of think that like that should be factored in a little bit. Uh, I think both the players are playing very similar Druid decks. We've seen Harrison Jones uh, in the past, but I don't believe it was from either one of these players. So that's not really a factor. Um, hopefully the, the players in the end who have brought some of these tech choices uh, will be rewarded for it. But, you know, with any one of tech choice, it's, it's going to be hit and miss. I mean... Yeah, you can't really expect to draw any specific card in any one game. So we'll see. We'll see. But uh, for now, I... I would give the edge to Forsen just because of uh, the slight advantages in uh, uh, in some of the choices that he has. Oh, yeah, I would and say I, there we go. Harrison yeah, Jones. You, it, I actually went back and looked. It was Tice versus Amnesiac when Tice got the Harrison Jones as priest mm -hmm. against the Shaman. Um, now Amnesiac is also running Harrison Jones. In fact, he's, it, it feels like he's running a lot like the list that he posted on his social media that he got like top. 50 legend or so with with okay. the Stangorn Tigers yeah. and the Jason Jones. Obviously, instead of Shredder, though, he runs with things like the uh, Savage Combatant, which are also very good. Part of the reason why oh, nice. Savage Combatant even got a uh, bad rap in the first place because of Shredder, but sorry, mm -hmm. okay, we just, I'm stepping on you right now. Oh, it's, that, that wild growth is disgusting. That's Savage Combatant, Innervate, Hero Power to kill the Trog. Yep. 
really big, uh, but it doesn't go unchecked. The lava burst will allow the the totem golem to to answer, and then you're in the spot where you probably just want to swipe, right? Hmm. Do you lava because burst? you don't want to give I up hairs. Dude, that card is so scary. Yeah, you're right. Oh man, you gotta save that Harrison. Okay, Slice it is. Yeah, with two, it's a much easier decision. Yeah. But um, you know, Forsen can't actually develop anything behind this, so uh, Amnesiac can get some pretty commanding board spot by using Keeper of the Grove, and that I mean that's a two four, and it's not the most imposing thing, but. You know, together with swipe and hero powers, you can really pick apart almost anything Shaman puts out. Yeah, we're, we're kind of seeing the same game played out where the, the Druid, usually through Summer Ramp, gets a little bit of a head start, and it just keeps it. It feels like the Shaman has such problems coming back on the board. He doesn't want to Doom Hammer on 5 because he has so many cards and minions on board. I like it. It's only one overload, so he still could Doom Hammer the following turn. Good flexibility developed here. And that's going to mean Ancient of Lore gets dropped. Picking up some... Oh, I was thinking he was going to draw, but you know what? He's being super careful, going up to 30 health. Oh, man. What do you think, yeah, bro? I think that's like, hey, bro, I have a Harrison. I think that's like too revealing. I think you just yeah. got to draw to keep that part secret. We haven't. I don't think we've seen Harrison in, in his in his druid deck. No, not previously. So I don't think Forson's working off that knowledge. But he's not playing it either. But now he will be. But like after that play, it's it's a no brainer. No, but I'm saying he's he's not playing it yet uh, because he has more minions. And I mean these minions are pretty imposing as well. Oh. Hmm. Flame. I mean, his next turn he might just. Iron Horse Rider Flame Jugger. Like, like, sometimes you're forced to play the Doom Hammer because you have nothing else, but there's other pl alternative plays. Okay. Yeah, this swipe's huge. But there's no Trog to BGH. What do you do? <laughs> I don't know. Like, what, what you, I guess you just Flame Juggler and you play the big game hunter to start killing off the Totem Golems. Oh man! Oh, here we go. Let, let's see what Amnesiac chooses to do with these emotes. I wonder. I wonder what play he'll make here. Oh man, he's trying to contain his face. He, he tilts his head back. Cause that Doomhammer belongs to the museum, and Forsen is about to get completely outcarded here. <laughs> oh. Uh, no innervate. It'll actually mean a pretty clunky hand, though. He's like, look, he, he drew six cards, and none of them are good here. None of them. They all suck. Uh, living Roots BGH. <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually. I Oh, no, he's going to kill it. Okay. I think Living Roots BGH may have worked out a little bit better. Yeah, you know, one of the curses of playing Druid is sometimes you just draw all mid-range minions and you don't have enough mana to use it. Another Doom Hammer? It's just one of those really funny things where second Doom Hammer ends up being like Drawn right off the top and resume damage as normal. All right. Well, damage is being resumed at least. Where yeah, he's not out of the woods, but two dru druid of the claws. And look at those uh, TGT board minions cheering in the background. Yay! <laughs> plus twelve. Hooray! Oh god. All right. Well, he can actually kill one druid of the claw without any casualties, but I believe. He will have to pass after it doesn't feel good at all. At least swipes were used, so there's yeah, no possibility for swipe destroying him. Uh, yeah, Amnesiac is trying to find every single way he can not die from this position. And I think it's going to have to be um, yeah, either you, you Ancient of War, or... Mm. Yeah, you have to you have to hero power, I guess. I was thinking you could maybe wild growth and try to get a force, uh, force of nature. That would help clearing a lot. 
Yeah, the force of nature would have been pretty huge, but I think this is just reliable because the Ancient of War is kind of like a force of nature. A everything has to attack into it. Flamethrowing Totem, not bad, but not enough. Yeah, it's still a little short. Yeah, like a lot short actually. Because <laughs> now uh, this is where you turn the tides. 5, 10, 16 damage. 19 damage right now. Yeah, I, I guess you can just clear. What about play Ragnaros? I think I'd go double face just to keep her the spell damage totem. And uh, Thorson. Oh, Ragnaros. Yeah, it's 8 damage. It's 16 damage over 2 turns, so it's just like almost guaranteed lethal. Um, even if Shaman played like Elemental Destruction, it wouldn't clear the board either. So, mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah, you're right about that. Okay. Uh, Earthshock, oh. Mob Burst. That's two series in a row that Force is dropping a game one, like a, the first game that Shaman plays to he Drew is lost yet. well for him, so. He hasn't lost. Uh, in the previous series of Strife 4, I thought this was kind of the same thing, where Strife Crew just outlasted him. Mm -hmm. So... Earthshock to stay alive, but we all know what's actually happening uh, yeah. here. That's a rip. But it's a good effort, because he just doesn't have enough burn. If he was only able to get more damage with the Doomhammer... Uh, I think that's just guaranteed lethal if you use Keeper and Savage Roar here. Oh, I like it, styling. I like it a lot. Oh, it's so good. The yeah, moment Ragnaros gets to get his hands dirty. Too soon. <laughs> you know, you know if uh, Forsen gets a chance to, he's going to strike back with vengeance. <laughs> if he gets a chance to, we'll see. He's going to um, do the emote sampler. He's going to make mm -hmm. his way around the wheel. You know, do a little bit of extra damage unnecessarily to his own face. It's going to be great. I love it. Amnesiac gets the first point on the board. It is a Druid victory. Um, shallowest of victories in this uh, in this format from what we've seen so far. Uh, yeah. Druids have not had much difficulty winning games. Um, <clears throat> shamans have struggled a little bit. For as popular as Shaman is, I feel like it's the, the typical overplayed tournament the class wolves. there's always like you know everyone plays that one class and then everyone has tech choices or counters against it, it doesn't really work all as well as you'd think it would it yep. kind of feels like shaman is there like it's played almost as much as druid but its win rate is considerably lower yeah but it also could be the fact that it's just the de facto next best deck that's available mm -hmm. uh, and so it'll always lose to something that's druid that's a little bit better than it and then two pair <laughs> Three that's high. A, that's a horrible Don't two change this trip. <laughs> The same exact scenarios. Um, what do you go oh, with here? Fire Blast's not irrelevant. Fire Blast is also pretty good for board control. I think I like Fire Blast. There's just so many minions with one health. I like it too. I think it's just better on board, which is ultimately what you care about. There's also something to be said where Reinforce builds up a reasonable board, too. And on turn two, you're going to be... I mean, making a 1-1 one -one is not too bad, but Fire Blast also gives you leverage over things like... Uh, like uh, Knife Juggler and whatnot. Amnesiac going through uh, some of the emotes to, again to Forsen's head, but if you know Forsen, he already squelched him like two minutes ago when the game started. <laughs> Alright. Uh, wow, that feels bad. It feels really bad. Yeah, no coin on the Leper Gnome either. Because he knows he just gets pinged by the hero power. Mm -hmm. And now he's overloaded for one, so he's going to play double Leper Gnome. Oh! Um, I still like Leper Gnome here, because playing Leper Gnome into two mana is very different than playing Leper Gnome into three mana. You often welcome a ping in this situation. Okay, that's fair, because then you, you the make him float one mana and have to have a one drop when you yeah. already use one. Mm -hmm. Completely reasonable. Totem Golem trying to uh, bring back the board state. 
Based off of this, though, you can't coin Doomhammer. Yeah, and that is a little bit of an issue. That makes every card in your hand dead. You can't even Lava Burst, because if you Lava Burst, then you couldn't coin Doomhammer the following turn either. So I actually don't like that too much. I I think it it's too heavily based on drawing well next turn, which there's no guarantee of that in this deck. Yeah. Lava Shock... Trying to bring back the board a little bit under control for Amnesiac. Forza needs to draw something to play that doesn't overload him too much. He can overload for one still. Mm -hmm. Oh no! You don't want to use that! This is just going to be a hero power turn, hero power trade. Do you, you trade? Have to trade? Yes, you trade. Because if you can get hero powered, you know your opponent has very little, and spell damage to him is very valuable. Whoa! That's Holy a ton of cow! Uh, let's see. The Six, hammer uh, race! 16, 21, 24. Uh, oh, and that will cost. What's, six what's mana. that game where like the robots just like punch each other and you just click one button constantly? Uh. This is uh, that. There's, there's a game like that that I played recently called okay. Dive Kick. <laughs> the entire game, the you just dive kick. You just element, jump and keep dive kicking. This is that. He also has his own Doom Hammer, by the way. You. And he can also pick up Rock Biter. <laughs> and then we can just have a, a, a two Rock Biter Lava Burst face off. Yep. Which, let's see, the new hammers. Alright. I don't think that's all totems are relevant. <laughs> I've also learned that you can't squelch in spectate mode. Yeah, so they. The, we the have streamer, the streamer has each other unlimited the BM privilege on the viewers. You know what? Sir Finley might not be too bad if you can pick up something to keep yourself alive in the race. Or even to accelerate the damage. He's going for it! I like it! Alright. He's just gonna assume... Right now, Amnesiac has 16, 19 damage available to him. And I'd say you go for it. Whoa. Wait, would you want to uh, hero power so you can? No, it is. Actually, you can maximize your damage that way. I like definitely hero power. That... Then you get guaranteed lethal next turn. Forsen has to draw exact lethal right now with a rock biter. Yeah, he has oh, to. That mana? Yeah. Oh. oh my god! Can't do it. <laughs> Looks like elements will not destroy Amnesiac today. In fact, it is the elements that will destroy Forsen. Oh man. Should have picked a better hero power. Now nah, that's a race. This is the equivalent of the 100 meter sprint in Hearthstone. I think if if Forsen was given a defensive hero power, it would have been a good choice to take it. The elements, the elements will destroy. Because he had he had lethal no matter what. Oh, here we go! Oh, the let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Destroy you! That's four. That's five. That's six. <laughs> he's going to eight. Is he going to go to double digit emotes? That's ten. That's ten. He's got he's got a dozen elements that's going to destroy Forsen. Oh my god! And you know what the worst part is? Forsen probably emoted him. Oh, sorry, squelched him. And then you can see the white border around the hero portrait, so you know what's happening. <laughs> Forsen concedes. Doesn't give him the satisfaction, but I think Amnesia. Yeah, there was there was plenty of satisfaction there already. All you know, right. Well, it is uh, Amnesiac on his final deck, which is Rogue, which is like uh, the, the the third wheel of uh, what we've seen today. Uh, not Shaman, not Druid, but he only has to win one. And uh, I think he has a decent matchup against really everything. If the Druid doesn't get ramp, I think the Rogue is fine, because it's a slow game. Miracle. It's going to win. Against the Mage, if it draws anti-aggro tools, which... Miracle decks do have those. It's probably going to win. Um, I'm thinking maybe Shaman is the toughest matchup. Because the one thing you need as, as the rogue is time. And, you know, backstabbing a minion or two against Shaman, from what we've seen, doesn't really work all that great. 
Yeah, um, that's a really good point. Backstab doesn't kill off the Trog. The Trog can continue to get stronger. Uh, you might have to use your dagger to take some extra damage to shoot yeah. out the board. Uh, and then they're face attacking you a lot. I'm inclined to believe that Shaman's the best, followed by uh, probably the Druid, just because it's more reliable than anything else. And then we'll, we'll just wrap it up with the good old Mage versus Rogue, just like we started the previous series with Forest and Merch Drive Crow. Uh, seems to be the most reasonable uh, line of choices. Although, realistically, if Forsen feels like it's time to wrap it, call it a day, he can pick his weakest Watch deck and try back. to just win with that. Well, it's Trog into Totem Golem. That is pretty good. Yeah, Trog, oh, but Totem Golem. Blood Mage into Backstab. That's also pretty good. Yeah, it's probably the best answer, honestly. Is there any other thing that you want? It's almost as good as it gets. Yeah. Uh, now, is he going to do the third part of this play, which is emote? He chooses not to. Okay, he's being a little bit tame. I like yeah. it. He's, pick he's picking his battles, Griff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He only knows when he's got the surefire win, he goes all out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty embarrassing when you emote spam and then lose, just like uh, what we saw happen to Force Center there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was pretty embarrassing. But you know what? It's kind of why we love him. Is there any card you could have drawn to improve this turn? You mean, um... Like, I wonder if... It, or Amnesiac. Amnesiac. Like, I wonder if attacking first and maybe getting something better was ever going to be an option. Probably not, though. No, there's not, like, easy three damage, three removal, like, bash in the deck, so I don't think so. Oh, here we go. This is when the shenanigans begin. Violet Teacher. One of the most powerful cards to handle aggro because a lot of your spells... Just give those 1-1 one, one tokens, which allow you to pressure back onto your opponent, or clear the board. Hunter Hero Power is one of the best that you can ask for. Druid's also okay. Yeah, definitely quite good. Goes for the clear here. I like it. Yeah, I like it as well. Those 1-1s one, can be such a problem later on. I also think I like the uh, Eviscerate Van Cleef play. What about, what about Sap Van Cleef? Nah, probably not. Yeah, Sap probably this one's better. Probably. I don't know. It, it's, it's hard to say because mm. either way, you have to give up damage or take damage. So I think you'd rather the give up damage portion because you don't want to take too much from the Shaman. Yeah, the Mancleave I think is a lot better than the uh, the Farseer, just because uh, the two damage reach is quite common, but the three damage reach usually involves a rock biter investment, and you're happy when that happens. Don't worry, love. Yep, Calories good point. Good point. So annoying. <laughs> it is. Just you can't cleanly remove it with the hand you have, but Phantom Knives certainly help. Whoa, oh, so good. Oh my goodness! Right off the top. Back to back top decks with Phantom Knives SI, and it's in that order. Oh, it looks like we got a little spectator uh, flub here. Mm hmm. So well, we do know that, um, that, that SI is definitely being played, and that board was absolutely being cleared by Amnesiac. So it, it looks like uh, Amnesiac was in a good spot. Uh, low 20s on HP with a heal, but he was pushing high mana crystals. Like, I think that was that was turn 6 that he cleared the board with. So, um, I think overall, Amnesiac is, is probably in, uh, in terrific shape here. Uh, just because he has the time that you rarely expect to have in this matchup. Yeah. Uh, can Forsen get the Doomhammer, though? Because it's one of those things where, he, it's just one of, like, Rogue might run out of time. But the more mana Rogue collects with some of these spells on Gadgetson Auctioneer, better it <laughs> so just YOLO Gadgetson? YOLO, no. I think if you have no other play. Okay, looks like he's going to sap here. Just to get the most possible tempo. It's kind of funny that so many people are bringing Miracle, but Forsen didn't bring it. Because that's what Forsen's claim to fame was. <laughs> back in the day. Forsen got number one uh, on both servers, EU and NA, with Miracle Road, back when his stream was uh, centered around Game 4. <laughs> Alright. Oh, another oh, sap. Another spell. I got the best 
That's sap the uh, sap the wolf. Yeah. Yeah, you can also consider is... sapping the trog. Yeah, but if you sap the wolf, you can kill the um, uh, the leper gnome, and that's very nice. And you have to imagine that Forsen has to kill the gadgets in here. Yeah, it's too, it's too much of a threat. But, I mean, it's not that even that he has to, but Rogue's almost on no cards without the card engine. I mean, who's really the one in a good spot here when they're both top decking? Yeah. Do you think it's Shaman or do you think it's Rogue? Mm. It's a well, board clear? Poor. It's a board clear, but it's, it is pretty poor. Do you think you'd go for it? Is there like a fancy way to board clear and keep a deadly poison charge? I don't think so. so like if you flurry first, SI. Oh, you can. Yeah, flurry there is. First. There's, there's exactly that. Yeah. Flurry yeah. first, SI, deadly poison. Yeah, I like that. So you can keep the second charge and keep it relevant for killing whatever comes out next. Mm -hmm. It's not even that fancy. It's just good. Aww. He doesn't it want to good, take damage at all. He's really three, scared. You take three damage. So. Yeah. He's scared of like Doom Hammer off the top. We've all been there. All right. Well, in the uh, draw one card game, the rogue wins unless that card is Doom Hammer on the shaman side. Yeah. Uh, I think if Rogue just draws preps and stuff. Oh man, would you play it? Yes. He's keeping it because he just wants to be guilt to guarantee draw. It doesn't necessarily give him Doom Oh Hammer. no! Hello? That is four turns of six damage. He says 24, but he can also cut his turn short by having that lava burst. And Forsen just got a breath of fresh air in this series. If he can survive a couple more turns, he's just gonna end it. Oh, next turn it's it's likely to be lethal. Oh man. Six, uh, six damage, eleven. He just has to take three more damage. Oh, but that that was a that was a bit of a slip up there. Um, I don't think it really mattered if the uh, if the SI was stealthed or not. Oh, oh man, this is starting to get really tense. Farseer, is that going to put him out of range? I mean, depends. We have to see what he's going to draw. Leprechaun's not it. Nope, nope, that is not lethal. He's Eight, a little bit short here. Eleven, twelve. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of draws here for Miracle to end, and Miracle just needs one damage? But it's not gonna happen. Like, there's... There's just no way that you win. Yeah. Yeah. Orson wow! Just gives up. Orson concedes, and that's a 3-0 for Amnesiac. He's gonna advance to day number three to the finals after taking down Forsen, who looked like he was in a reasonable position to advance when he was uh, tie with Strife Crow, but... Ends up Sweet bowing again. Out yeah, Nisiak uh, apparently is on a roll here after uh, a little bit of a slip up in the opening game. Uh, three zero against Forsen and just earlier three zero against Luis. Uh, pretty pretty good stuff, especially considering that you know it, it is a new format and it's not really one that you can prepare too much. You're really working off of assumptions and guesswork. And um, no, well, seems like he's hit a good spot. Up next, we have Kibler versus Tice. We will see uh, our, our final match, who will advance to the final day's worth of games where, uh, where the money is at. Yeah, yeah, that's right, guys. Uh, so when we come back, our last games of the day. Uh, once again, a shout-out to Geek Fuel and Curse Network for helping us put on the event. Uh, and uh, when we come back, we're going to see who is getting the final spot for the first half of the players. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be back in just a sec.